Patriots fans should feel blank about Tom Brady? Melancholy. I mean, you're sad that it's over. You're, you're wistful thinking about all the great memories. You understand how incredibly lucky you are to have had this guy in your organization. But you, much like the owner, wish he would have only played for your organization. No one else wants Tom Brady creating memories for those fan bases. And so, you melancholy. You're not angry. You're a little sad. But you also, you know, you look back with nostalgia over what you once had. So that's my answer, melancholy. They should feel indebted. They were provided some of the best football we will see at the quarterback position. And they got Super Bowls on top of that. They should totally feel indebted. Nothing lasts forever. They understand that. We all want things to last forever, but that's not the reality. They should feel financially responsible. Not only was it the right move for the Patriots not to sign Tom Brady to an expensive long-term contract, but personally, you need to be financially responsible because not this upcoming year, but next year, Tampa Bay will be in Foxborough. So you need to start saving your money right now because these tickets are going to be about $8,000 a piece. All right. Good stuff, Wilds. Uh, So with Brady in Tampa Bay, that means Jameis Winston is out. Nick, Jameis' free agent market is blank. Fascinating. This is one of the most interesting free agent quarterbacks I can ever remember. Because if you gave me just a five-minute cut-up of the best plays of last season, you would say this is a $33 million a year quarterback. And if you gave me just a five-minute cut-up of the worst plays of his from last season, you would say, wait, there was a strike and we had replacement players? Nobody told me. So I don't know what you do with that. I, his upside is, is top six or seven in the league. His downside is one of the worst quarterbacks you've ever seen. And so what is the team that wants to take the plunge on that Does anyone want to put their fan base through the ups and downs of it? I don't know, but it is fascinating to watch. Nick, I couldn't agree with you more, but I think it's dwindling. So I don't quite agree Uh as far as fascinating. I think it's more so dwindling because you look at the options that are out there of teams, but then you look at potential quarterbacks that could be available options to these teams and a cam newton so it's it's dwindling you you mentioned all his highs but you can't take his highs without addressing his lows and so i think his window of opportunity for these teams are dwindling i think this cold market for Jameis is bruce arian's fault this whole no risk it no biscuit Jameis bought into it hey coach I uh, risked it. I threw 30 interceptions, and now I have no free agency market anymore. Why Bruce Arians is getting off on this scot-free is crazy. All right, I like it. On to Cam Newton now. Greg, you mentioned Cam. Here we go with the Panthers picking up Teddy Bridgewater. That means Cam Newton is odd man out in Carolina. Nick, Cam will have a blank impact on his next team. Cam Newton will have an awesome impact on his next team. I I try to have enough self-awareness that if my opinion is so far out of the mainstream on things, I realize I say to myself, well, maybe I'm missing something here. But on this Cam Newton situation, I'm just convinced everyone else is wrong and I'm right. We live in a world <laughs> where Joe Flacco a year ago got three years, 66 million, where the Bears just actively traded for Nick Foles. We live in a world where you have, in case Keenum gets a free agent contract, remember that long neck character, Mike Glennon? The Bears were like, oh, we need him years ago. And nobody wants Cam Newton for 19 million bucks. Nobody wants a guy who at the beginning, the last time we saw him healthy, wasn't seven years ago. It was 2018, the, the, the first eight games of that season. 19 touchdowns, four picks, a 101 rating, highest completion percentage of his career. He then got his shoulder wrecked got his foot broke, and we haven't seen him since. 
Cam Newton, whether it's with the Chargers, if they're smart, or with it, maybe Miami, if they decide they want a red shirt tool for a year, if that's who they draft, no matter where he goes, he will have an awesome impact because he's 30 years old and still a really good quarterback. Nick, I'm with you. I think he's going to have a positive impact wherever he ends up. Hopefully that is with the Chargers because I would like to see him with weapons around him and a defense like he had possibly once in his career in, in Carolina. But for me, I'm with you, Nick. Cam Newton provides you everything that we're seeing out of, like, Lamar Jackson. He can run. Uh, Russell Wilson's all these pocket passers, but also guys that have the ability to extend the plays and wreck football games with their legs. Cam Newton has been doing this since he entered the National Football League. And so his upside is still there. I like Cam Newton. I think an older Cam Newton is going to be a mature Cam Newton. I like the positive impact that he's going to make on wherever he lands. I agree, Greg. I think it's going to be franchise defining. Now, look, the one thing I can't defend is his Instagram font. It's terrible, and I know he's not going to change it, and it's just the worst. You know what else is great about Cam Newton, though? You know the Panthers nominated for the Walton Payton Man of the Year? Cam Newton. And as part of that, they have a charity challenge. And you know who won it? Cam Newton. So not only will he deliver on the field, he's a great guy, so kill that narrative off the field as well. He'll be a franchise-defining quarterback if you pick him up. I agree with you on the font. Hard to be mobile, though, when you're coming off Liz Frank injury, <laughs> so we'll have to wait and see. Let's move on to uh, Phillip Rivers now, the 38-year-old former Chargers quarterback, signed with the Colts one year, $25 million. So, Nick, I ask you, Rivers' first season in Indy will be blank. A train wreck. I, Indy. <laughs> Come on, Chris Ballard. You had done so many things right. And then all of a sudden, this one offseason, you, you trade the 13th pick of the draft away so you can give DeForest Buckner $21 million a year. And then you say, hey, 38-year-old Phillip Rivers, we saw you fall off a cliff last year. I'm going to fly my team plane into, that, into the drop zone and try to have you come on here. What are you doing? Jacoby Brissett was really good, was good last year until he got hurt. To all of a sudden get rid of, uh, ostensibly get rid of Jacoby, so you can bring on Philip Rivers for what is going to be a disaster season, where he's just going to continue to throw it into triple coverage for no reason whatsoever. I don't get it. I don't understand the move. It's not going to end well. And I, the Colts had a great opportunity because the Texans are run by Bill O'Brien to step into the void in that division, and uh, they, they they bring in Philip Rivers. What are you doing, Indy? It's going to be a train wreck, Greg. Nick, again, I'm with you. If we weren't in this social distancing deal, I would high-five you. I would come and give you a hug. <laughs> it's going to be consistently inconsistent. This is who Philip Rivers have proven to be his entire career. I don't understand, as you just mentioned, why a team who was trending up both defensively and offensively, goes out and gets an older quarterback who has proven to be inconsistent. I get it. He has some flashes where he's really good, and he's potentially a Hall of Famer. But not for this team is he the, good, the best fit. He is not the best fit. I don't think it's going to work. He's going to be consistently inconsistent the way he showed us his entire career. Greg, I'm going with boring. Even when they announced Philip Rivers signing, Ballard touted his familiarity with the system and experience. <laughs> <laughs> that means move on. That means that's my sleeping. <laughs> oh, okay. Got, 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 got. Right, and sleep. by I'll the way, he did I'll contemplate retirement before the offer came in, so maybe it's half on him, it's half boring. on the Colts, so we'll see. Moving on to Tua Tungavaloa. Let's try to wake Wilds up here. Uh, the former Alabama quarterback posted Sorry. a video of him throwing yesterday. <laughs> Don't apologize. Nick, Tua's draft stock is blank after his recent workout, which a lot of people thought he looked pretty good in. 
I'm going to say it's the status quo because I've thought he's the best quarterback in this draft all along. That I think this time, I, I think it's a really interesting period we're in because of the social distancing, because of what's going on with coronavirus, where teams can't meet with these guys. What are you going to have to go on? This shocking idea of how about you just go on what they looked like as a college quarterback? And what did Tua Tungavailoa look like as a college quarterback? A badass. He was spectacular. He's going to continue to get healthier. Will he be ready to play immediately? Probably not. Is he going to go number one overall the way he should? No, Cincinnati's going to take Burrow. But he's going to be a top five pick. Miami would love it if he's there at five. Some team might jump ahead of him. But that was going to be the case with or without this video. So I say status quo. Yeah, it's going to stay the same. He's going to be the second quarterback taken off the draft board. And and when you look at it, he rightfully so should be. Anytime you've suffered an injury, regardless of what you show me after suffering a significant injury like that, I know who you are as a player. Now the only question is, are you going to be 100% healthy? And so I think if he had no injury, we all agree He's the first pick in the draft, but because of the injury, his, his, his draft status is going to stay the same. I'm going with movie trailer ready. This is all we're going to see at Tua, and we had a nice little Instagram video, but we need to go the whole way. Tua's team, you got to get uh, Final Cut Pro on your MacBooks and make a full-on <laughs> trailer because this is all we've got. We've got no dinners. We've got no workouts. We've got no pro days. We need real movie trailer stuff from you. Good theme song, Tua, nice font. Go for it. All right. Uh, let's get back to Tom Brady for a second. His nickname, TB12. Why? Where's number 12? Well, right now, number 12 in Tampa Bay is owned by Chris Godwin. He has mentioned he'd be willing to give it up, but Nick, Godwin should ask Brady for blank in exchange for the number 12. A Maybach. It's the highest level Mercedes Benz, <laughs> about two hundred twenty-three thousand dollars, fully loaded. It's a classy vehicle. I think it would signal to the world that Chris Godwin is ready for the veteran stage of his career. Not going Ferrari, not going Bentley, a little played out, but a family sedan that also sometimes comes with a driver. I'd make Brady kick that in as well. It adds about thirty-four thousand dollars a year to the price. So we're talking about about a quarter of a million dollars for TB12 to get his number. And Chris Godwin gets a car. You don't want to, you don't want the cash. There's tax implications there. You want Brady to buy you the car, pay the taxes, and we're all good. So I'd say a Maybach is the correct answer here. Wow, wow. No, he he should he shouldn't ask for anything. And the reason oh why is because he should not have to. Tom Brady should just provide him with whatever it is he knows he someone in his position would want. I shouldn't have to request my number if I'm the greatest player of all time. We Chris Goodwin has already come out and said I would willingly give it up. Tom Brady knows that. So now it's on Tom Brady to make the move and give him whatever he believes he's deserving of. Greg, I think you should ask for a trip to Yellowstone National Park, and here's why. In Tom vs. Time, episode three, Tom Brady organized something called Gladiator Camp. And they rode ATVs, and they also, they worked out, they drank, uh, you know, special TB12 protein shakes. Jenna, I know you would like those. Um, and that was honestly, I know it's a joke, but like, that really like melds the receiver and the quarterback. So Goodwin had nine touchdowns that last year. With TB12, going 12 touchdowns if you get yourself to Yellowstone. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First, or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.